All right, FAQ number 24. The question comes up, why did John admire the harlot in Revelation chapter 17, verse 6? Let's go there. Revelation 17, verse 6 says here, well, actually, we'll jump up to um, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet collar, the colors of the Vatican, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration." So now the uh, new versionist perverts will come along and they'll say, well, obviously the King James Bible is being very nice to the, to the you know, Roman Catholic system here, so it must be a covert Catholic Bible or some kind of nonsense uh, because it says John admired. He wondered with great admiration. Okay, now you can make the arguments, well, you know, words have changed meaning since 1611, blah, blah, blah. But the fact of the matter is you don't need to do that. You don't need to make excuse for the King James Bible. Why? Here's what it means. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. What's going on there? What did it say back here in verse 5? The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It isn't just that John looks over at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome and he sees her and that's that. What does John see? He sees her, the mother of and the daughters, and all those daughters out there. And here's the funny thing. A lot of them look like they're Christians. And they can be very, very deceptive. And they can act like they are preaching the gospel, and they can, they can deceive you. And so you can wonder, and you can go, wow, you know, wow, these, maybe these people are, are Christians. Maybe they're saved, you know. Have you ever been there? You know, you start to get deceived by some group or something like this, you know, some Babel building someplace, and you think, well, they, maybe this is Christian or something. Maybe this is okay. Maybe maybe it's okay to worship in a Babel building or, or whatever else. You start to wonder with great admiration. You go into that building, and you're looking up there, and you're going, man, it must have cost a fortune to build this place. And Wow. What would, have, what would modern day America and the world look like to somebody from the first century, like John was seeing? Uh, there'd be a lot to admire. There'd be a lot that you look and you go, what is that? Oh, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like this. I mean, remember, John's mind is back there in the first century. And he's going, what in the world is this stuff here, man? You're looking and seeing it, you know, jet, fighter jets going over. What was that? You know, and seeing all these wild things and stuff like this. I mean, it would have been quite a shock for John to see it. But look at verse 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. So the angel, he understands it, and he's like, Why are you marveling? What, you know, why are you all impressed by this thing? See? But you see, modern day, what falls under Christianity, if you really study it, it goes back to the Vatican. Uh, there were no Christians in the first century building church buildings. You know, people, how oh, you just beat that subject to death? Well, you know, it's because a lot of people don't get it yet. You know, uh, they weren't meeting in Babel buildings back in the first century. But the Babel buildings of today, you can make them look pretty close to being good Christian organizations. You can deceive people. Okay? But God never intended it. You cannot show me from Scripture where God ever told anybody to build a church with a steeple on top and do all the other things. It goes back to the Vatican. They're the ones that got it from the pagans. They used the pagan temples and put the Christian names in them. That's why John saw it and, and was like, oh, wow, you know, it was deceiving John. And the angel's like, hey, you know, why are you marveling? Stop, you know. Let me, let me show you the judgment here that's going to come on this system. That's what's going on there. And by covering up that fact, again, you're covering up for the fact that this modern day, what falls under Christianity today, it's an illusion. It's not real. It's not what was in the first century. Again, you have the Bible being written, having this stuff written down centuries before it even became popular. Again, you go back to 1611, 
Bible-believing Christians back then weren't meeting in church buildings. Okay, the first Baptist church building on record is in, was built in 1700 here in America. You know? It built with a lottery, too, state-sponsored lottery. See? It's a, it's a problem. So, that's what's going on there. That's what's happening here in that verse. And by changing admiration to something else, you're actually covering up for that fact. So, these people, they come out with all these little attacks, all, all these little nitpicky things about why this and why that and how about this and how about that. And it's all designed to get you to deny the King James Bible. Don't even waste your time on them. Don't listen to them. So that'll be it. We'll see you in the next FAQ.